You probably know that Gary Rossington, founding member of Leonard Skinner, died earlier in 2023. His play is a perfect blend of blues, country, and rock, and it's a masterclass in chord tones, appropriate for players of all skill levels, beginner to advance. So let's check it out. Growing up in Detroit in the 1970s and being heavily influenced by a cousin who is 10 years my senior, I grew up on a steady musical diet of the Beatles, the Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Who, and a handful of others. But eventually I started listening to FM radio too. And one day I was over at Buddy's house who lived a few doors down. Now he had a great record collection, or actually it was cassette tapes. Anyway, he pulled out a cassette, tossed it over to me and said, you gotta hear this. My first thought was, how the heck do you pronounce this? Luckily it was right on the album cover. Yep, Leonard Skinner's first album, pronounced Leonard Skinner. It's a hilarious title, and it's got some great songs on it. Give Me Three Steps, Simple Man, and of course, Free Bird! But what really blew my mind is they had not one, not two, but three guitarists in the band who played lead. What? But Gary's style is really the focus of this video. Stylistically, he was influenced by players like Albert King and Dwayne Allman, and heavily by Eric Clapton, but he was not a carbon copy. For one thing, he didn't feel the need to shred all the time. He didn't just play that rock, blues, country blend that Southern rock is famous for. He could play melodically his secret sauce, and that's what we'll focus on. Now, he played some great guitar solos, but one that's really instructive for players of all levels is Tuesday's Gone, another beautiful song from that first album. So let's have a quick listen to that opening solo and then break it down. It's all about chord tones and phrasing. so melodic and instructive. Because it's so slow, you can hear every single note clearly and focus on making them sound good. Now, a lot of people explain this by just saying, hey, it's all in A major pentatonic and just leave it right there. But that is not the whole story. Gary emphasizes chord tones. If you listen carefully to this solo and the rest of them in the song as well, you'll hear that he lands on a chord tone on beat one of the chord. Let's look at it in detail. Here's the first line. That line ends on an A, which is the root note of the first chord A. Here's the second line. That line ends on an E, which is the root of the second chord E. Here's the third line. That line ends on an F sharp, which is the root of the third chord, F sharp minor. And here's the fourth line. That line ends on a D, which is the root note of the fourth chord, D major. But you don't have to land on the root note of the chord. You could land on any note in that chord, as you'll see. So that's Gary's secret sauce, chord tones. Now learning scales is great, but if you can pair those scales with chords, you can connect to the music in a much deeper way. If you really want to learn how you can use chord tones to sound more purposeful in your play, like Gary and so many other greats of that era, click here. Because in this video, I lay out a very clear process that you can use to really kick your playing into high gear. So click here, we'll see you in that video, and we'll see you on down the road.